Galatians chapter 5. Good singing this morning. Great to sing to the Lord. Great to pray together. Good to serve Him together with you folks. Praise the Lord. What a joy it is. What a blessing. We've looked at, uh, as we're working through a study in Galatians, we've kind of come to camp out on the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. And we're working through that. And uh, we took quite a bit of time on the works of the flesh. And we didn't like that so much. I don't know about you, but it's, you know, who likes to talk about that stuff? But we're enjoying the fruit of the Spirit. And we like, we like these things. We like talking about love. And uh, what a joy it is to, to, to have the love of God by the Spirit, a fruit of the Spirit. Uh, with that, we might find another character trait of joy. We've looked at Galatians 5.22, peace today. Looking at peace. Fruit of the Spirit is peace. Peace is used 369 times in the Bible which is significant. Uh, joy was used, what was it, 70 times? And uh, if I remember right, and, uh, but, but peace, 369, which is pretty significant. Peace, as we think about it, um, is uh, an inner response and quietness even in the face of adverse circumstances. Uh, peace is used in every book of the Bible, interestingly enough, except for 1 John. And uh, every book of the Bible has the word peace in it. So uh, we thank the Lord for that. Um, let's uh, look over to uh, Philippians 4, 7. Peace is something that we all need. And um, Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. In everything by prayer. And supplication, praying about things in general, supplication specific requests, with thanksgiving. If we ever stop being worshipers, we're in trouble. If we ever stop being thankful, we're in trouble. I appreciate what Jeff and Jamie did at a great time with Hoops and Heritage last night. One of the, one of the things they had when the kids were shooting, they said, give one thing you're thankful for, and then shoot the ball. And um, the kids did that. And I thought, wow. We need to be people that are thankful. When we become unthankful, we are, Romans chapter 1, we are headed toward becoming a pagan, idolater. That's how it starts. Stop being a worshiper of God. Stop being thankful. We're on the downhill slide. Okay? So we need to be people of prayer, coming with supplication specifically. With thanksgiving, are you a thankful person? We must. Let's keep working on that. And let your requests be made known to God. Don't ask the president, don't ask your boss, don't ask your spouse, don't ask your parents, don't ask your neighbor, don't ask the pastor, don't ask whoever. You can go right to the top. You can ask God in regard to your needs. And he hears you. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God is what we're talking about peace of God, something we all need. When things aren't going our way, we need peace. When we're having a bad day, we need peace. When we're nervous about something, we need peace. We may decide to turn to, uh, in those times of trial, what can we turn to when we have trouble? Well, we could turn to pie or ice cream. And we do sometimes, don't we? Or grab the, grab the snacks. <laughs> Some of us, I'm getting that look, the raised eyebrows. Some of us might do that, right? Maybe, somebody grab, maybe you grab a carrot, you know? Take it out on the carrot with your teeth, right? But we have a God we can turn to. Let's, let's um, peace is assured by a relationship with God. And you'll notice on the back of your bulletin, we have the half sheet there that uh, fill in the blank if you want to fill those in. But I, I just want to rejoice our hearts. If, if we don't get anything today, but if you will take with you Isaiah 26.3 and Philippians 4, 6 and 7, then you've had a successful day. And you have a life preserver, a, a life ring that's been cast to you in the storm of life that will carry you over every wave and through every trial when the darkest of night and the thunder claps and you think you're going down. These verses of God, God will bear you up. God will carry you. God will make a way for you, and you can count on it. 
when you are bleeding because you are in an accident, you're going to die, and there's no question about it, you can look death in the eye and go on. When your boss at work pulls that one on you or does something, or that spouse does something, or that child or that parent, you have a life preserver, you have a way that you can and you will endure by the grace of God, by the fruit of the Spirit, one of those fruit that fruit is described of love, joy, and peace. That you can have peace. Now, I don't say that we don't wrestle with that peace and that those trials try to rob our peace because, I don't know, in my life they do anyways. We want to experience the peace of God. We try to find an easier way to absorb the impact of the troubles of life by snacks or by mindless phone activity or, or computer activity or television activity, that mindless watching of television that, that can take us away. Or maybe we do something a little more se severe. I trust that we don't turn. Uh, we shouldn't turn to some of those things. Maybe it becomes uh, abuse or sin, but, but maybe alcohol or, or drugs or other things that, are, that are, are strong that will take us away from the burdens of life. Most of us are busy in school and in work or uh, things that we're doing and, and uh, there's, there's things that need to be fixed and, and cared for. We want a chance to lay down the burdens of life and take a break at times. We need peace. Peace is elusive at times. At the end of a long day, we want a few minutes of peace and quiet. But then there's that difficult conversation with someone, or the phone rings, or the kids won't settle down, or your mind won't turn off and you're in bed and you're trying to sleep and you wake up in the middle of the night and your mind kicks into high gear. Does that happen to you? There's anxiety over going to the dentist or the doctor or a treatment plan or a bill that's coming due, decisions that need to be made. Where is peace to be found? That piece of pie sounds better all the time. That double scoop, triple scoop of ice cream that's really destructive to us, you know. But we have the Spirit of God, the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. It comes from verse 16, but I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walking with God. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. They're contrary to one another. Down in verse 25 it says, If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Are you walking in the spirit? Today, our next verse here, right on the screen, if you want to turn to Isaiah 26, why don't we do that? Turn back to our Bibles. It's great to have a Bible. I like a paper Bible that we can turn to. Digitals, you know, that's great. I've not gotten into that yet, but that's fine. But I want to encourage you, from my perspective, I'd say get a paper Bible, a leather bound or whatever, and uh, that you can turn to and that you can underline stuff. You can write notes. You can draw arrows and lines and circle and underline and write notes in. And uh, that you can go back and look at previous verses and meditate on this stuff. And when, when you need to find a verse, Lord, help us to find it because we underlined it, right? That's what I try to do. Uh, Isaiah 26, 3, it says, You, and you can fill this in on your half sheet, you will keep him, you will keep him, you will, you will keep him in perfect peace. What kind of peace? Tell me. Perfect peace. Who's going to do that? The word is what? Y-O-U. What is it? You will. Who's it referring to? God. Stayed upon Jehovah, we just sang. That's what this is about. L-O-R-D, all caps in the Old Testament, is Jehovah, Yahweh, Almighty God. And the Jews took that name, that personal name of God, so sacred that it was lost even how to pronounce it. And we take it so easily. We sing, stayed upon Jehovah, and we're, you know, we're bubbly, and, and that's great. But you know what? This is, this is Almighty God. Very personal. And that he has invited us in to call him, he's called us friend. He loves us with the love that God the Father has for the Son that He loves us with that love. It says, you will keep Him in perfect peace. And here's the secret, circle it, whose mind is stayed on you. See, the trouble is, when trouble comes, we get our mind off the Lord. We get our mind off the Lord, folks. We start looking at the, the lion that's trying to devour us and the big wave that's coming and the flash of the lightning that distracts us from the very face of God where our eyes need to be focused. Or that person says something. Or the pain gnaws and nags and, and, and the sleeplessness 
pounds us and we know that we're tired, we need rest, we want to care for our bodies, but it's robbing us of the sleep and it gets our eyes off of God. We need to keep our eyes focused on God. Is that not what this is saying? Whose mind is stayed on you will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Because, here's the explanation of being stayed on him. Why are we stayed on him? Because he trusts in you. Because he trusts in you. Are you trusting in the Lord? Are you trusting in the Lord? Is God big enough to be trusted in today? Is your God big enough, your conception and your understanding of God, is your God big enough to be trusted with the biggest cares in the world? I'm telling you, I meant to pray for the Chinese Christians today in my prayer. I pray for them. Lord, please help the Chinese Christians. Amen. They're over there. They're, they're closing churches and they're burning them down. They're arresting whole congregations. How would you like if they walked in here today and they pulled the trucks up, the buses up, and they handcuffed you and they drug you out of here like animals and they kicked you in the back and drug you like a beast and threw you on the bus and hauled you away. Because one reason, because you take the name Jesus. What do we do in times like this? Maybe you say, that's what my life's just like. This other trial is a comparison to that. I want to tell you that if you will trust the Lord and keep your eyes on him when the devil plants his foot in the middle of your back and drags you away and the troubles of life is beating you up, I want to tell you that there's a God that can be trusted and we can trust him to the death. Whatever it may be. Well, I'll trust him in death, but will you trust him in life? When you've got to roll out tomorrow morning and the alarm's going to go off, you know it is. You've got it set already. It's going to go off. Are you ready to face it then? Is your trust in him then? You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. It says in verse 4, Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. I couldn't give you a better message this morning. I'm so excited about this. Are you? Are you, are you glad to be alive today and to be spiritually alive and to have a God? The, the word Yah here is Yahweh. It's part of, it's kind of a play here. It says, for in Yah, uh, the Yahweh is everlasting strength. Or, or in Yah, or Jeho, Jeho, Jehovah is uh, everlasting strength. That's the idea here. For in Yah, the very person of God, and, and the very core of who God is, he is taking care of you, child of God. We sang that we're hidden in the hollow of our, his hand. Where's that found? What book of the Bible? John. And he's, we're not going to be able to, what's gonna, not going to be able to happen to us. John 10. No one can pluck us out of his hand, Jesus said. He's got us. We're hidden in the Father's hand. <laughs> right? God's given you a promise, child of God. And if he loved you enough while you were a sinner, a rebel against him, and you had offended God's holiness, just like the father turned from the son at the, on the cross there, and Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's because of our sin. And if God will look our way for Christ's sake and accept us now, when we had the guiltiness of sin that Jesus paid for, and in our daily living we still do wrong, we still sin, if he loved us then, is he not going to love us now when we are his children? We can call him Father, Papa. He calls us friend. You see, peace is robbed from us, and we go for the ice cream and the apple pie when we forget this truth right here. We get our eyes off of God and that he is not the, the God of the universe that we are beginning to understand. In the Bible, he is so magnificent that it can't even be put into language how great God is. He is infinite. He is all-powerful, everywhere present, all-knowing. He cre created everything. What is out in outer space between here and the moon once we leave our atmosphere? What's there? There's something there, and science doesn't know what it is yet. God made all of this stuff. He made the atom. He made the cells. And he's the almighty God that sustains all of this. And he loves you. And he's going to take care of you. So don't get your eyes off of this truth whose mind has stayed on you. That's the trouble. We get our mind off of him and we stop trusting in him. We've we got to keep our mind on the Lord. You're getting the message this morning, and there's a lot more to come, but this is the heart of the message. If you get this, you've got the rest of the message. Okay? This is what it's all about this morning. You've got your mind stayed on the Lord. Is your eyes on him? 
whose mind has stayed on you because he trusts in you. Isaiah 26.3. We just looked at Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer. Okay, so that, that's, our, that's our minds on the Lord, and we're talking to God about, are you praying? Oh, we get all upset about things, but are we praying about it? We should be praying. We need to be people of prayer. I need to be a better person of prayer, and I want to be. And let's do it, right? Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Are you thankful? Let your request be made known to God. Let your request be made known. Are you asking him? Because the result will be when you are a praying person, I want to come back there and shake you and tell you this, look you in the eye and tell you this, that if you'll be a praying person of, of Philippians 4, 6, I'm going to flick the screen now to verse 7 because this is what God promises you. This is what he promised you. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. It blows our mind. We can't comprehend it that we can have peace. Why? We have prayed. We have looked to God with our need. Oh, you don't have any troubles? Nothing to pray about? No needs? Nothing that robs your peace? I'm telling you, if you don't, somebody near you does. Christians around the world do. And there's needs in our church family. We've got to pray for each other and pray for ourselves. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard. And the, the idea there is like a, a, a Roman soldier that is, that is set to defend. Will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It'll, it'll defend your heart. It'll, it'll keep you in peace when you're praying. Are you praying? Is your mind set on the Lord? Now, what's some of the best way to keep our minds settled on the Lord? Yeah. Can I slap my Bible? You know, it's like, right? The Bible. The Bible. Keep your mind on the Lord with the Bible. Are you reading your Bible? Pastor, you're talking about reading the Bible and praying again. That's right, and I'm telling you why it's so important. And I'm telling you the benefits of it. As we, part of this is from Galatians 5 is this is part of walking in the Spirit and crucifying the flesh and putting off the old man and saying, yes, God, I will walk in your ways. I will trust you. I'll be obedient to you. Yes, I'm tempted with sin, and the devil dangles the carrot of sin before us. We're saying, no, it's lies. It's wrong. I want to keep focused on the Lord. I want to do it his way. I want to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, and I want to have then the blessings of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, Peace it comes from the Spirit of God. Peace that surpasses all understanding. When you are in the midst of it, you're going in for surgery. You're going into the dentist. You're going in for treatment. You hear that bad news. There's peace that surpasses all understanding. Because God says, you're my child. And the Spirit bears up within us and reminds us that he's holding our hand right there at that moment. And he's carrying us through. This is life stuff that we face and that we need. That's what I need right here. Guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's say thank you to him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's done it, hasn't he, in our lives. Peace begins with salvation. They came preaching peace through Jesus Christ in Acts 10.36. You need to be saved. If you're going to have peace, you've got to be born again. We all, the Bible says we've all sinned. The wages of sin is death, and that we can't save ourselves. We deserve God's judgment. We have a gift from God in Christ. If we'll receive the gift, ask Jesus to forgive us, to be our Savior. He'll forgive us. We're to turn from sin and turn to God. When we do and make that decision, we become his disciples. So peace begins with salvation. I wanted to put that in there because peace, everybody doesn't have peace. People that don't know the Lord, what do they do? Pie, ice cream, cake, right? Facebook, um, TV, partying, spend more money, go deeper in debt, go after all these things, ah, da, 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 trying to find a way to get through the burdens of life, slap it on the smiley face, it's all good, and drink another one and pop a couple more and wash it down with some more because they're trying to find what God offers. And Satan robs, and you can have it, and you can tell them, because peace begins with salvation. Peace is uniquely from God. Peace is uniquely from God. He gives peace unlike the world. Let's look at Jeremiah 14. Isaiah, Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah 6, 14, 15, and 16. Pieces uniquely from God, uniquely. We don't get that in other places. It says here in Jeremiah 6, 14, they have also healed the hurt of my people slightly. How did they heal the hurt? Slightly. How did they heal the hurt? They put a Band-Aid over the wound, and it's not healing, guys, girls, okay? They have also healed the hurt of my people, that's Israel, slightly, saying, peace, peace. They're saying, oh, it'll be okay. They're, they're bucking up under it. They're bucking up, pulling themselves up by their bootstraps. It says, when there is no peace. They're saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Is that not what we find in the world today? Looking for peace everywhere. Trying to find some band-aids to put over it and make it all better, and it's not working. Verse 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Things that are abominable to God, were they, were they ashamed? No, they were not at all ashamed. Not all sh ashamed. Nor did they know how to blush. Do we blush at sin today? That's a good thing, to blush at sin. We ought to, we ought to be sensitive to certain things, and it's okay to blush at sin and immodesty and ungodliness and such things that, that, that are wrong. And the Bible says here they didn't know how to blush anymore, and that's a bad thing. And they weren't ashamed about sin. They talked about everything and anything. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall. At that time I will punish them, and they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Talking about peace, they couldn't find any. Look, look at Isaiah 59, back to the left a little bit. Isaiah 59, verse 8. Isaiah 59, beginning with verse 8. The way of peace they have not known. Do you know, hey, let me ask you this morning. Do you know the way of peace? It says here, those without the Lord. It says, the way of peace they have not known, and there is no justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked paths. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. Folks, I'm telling you, there's a lot of crooked paths out there. Jesus says, straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads unto eternal life. There's one way, and we need to stay on the straight and the narrow. We're not saved by works. We're not saved um, by, by doing things. We were talking about that Thursday night, false teachers, the spirit of Antichrist, and the Antichrist, and the Mormons that say, oh, you've got to work your way to get through this narrow gate. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's falsehood. That's what Mormons teach. It's wrong. It upsets us because it's a lie. We're not saved by works. But we need to be saved by grace through the cross and turn to him. Let's keep reading. Uh, into verse 8 here. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. Verse 9. Therefore justice is far from us, nor does righteousness overtake us. For we look for light, but there is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in blackness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday, as at twilight. We are as dead men in desolate places. We all growl like bears and moan sadly like doves. We look for justice, but there is none for, the salva for salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. Sin. That's why there's not peace in the world, because there's crooked paths out there. And we must fight and be close to God and keep our eyes on the Lord and talk to God and walk in the Spirit, because there's many crooked paths out there and many things that try to become a priority that lead us away from God, so we don't take the time to put God first as God, and we set up other idols in our life of other things that are more important than God, and we push God aside, and we say, this is what I'm going to spend my time on. This is what I'm going to do. Instead of obeying and walking with God by being in the Word and in prayer, and let's call it sin this morning. Can we do that? 
If we're too lazy and too uninterested to make God a priority, then it's sin. That hurts, doesn't it? My toes are hurting because I'm, I'm behind my Bible reading. But if it hurt your toes too, good for us. Let's get with the program and keep God number one. Now, if we, now if we uh, have reasons, that's one thing. But let's be, if we miss a day, that's one thing. But let's be faithful. Let's not let the devil beat us up because we missed a day. But are we faithful to pray? Are we faithful in the word? Are we faithful to look to the Lord in faith and in trust and to walk? with God in the spirit, hidden in the hollow of his hand, praise his name. Peace is uniquely from God. He gives peace unlike the world. Let's look at 57, verse 20. 57, verse 20 of Isaiah. It says, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace says my God, for the wicked. They're like the churning of, a, of an overflowing stream, that, that dark brown waters and all the dirt stirred up. Is that the way our life is? Peace comes from God, but the wicked don't have it. Don't go in the wicked way. Say no to sin in your life. All of us, we may be tempted this morning, I'm saying to all of us, we need to say no to sin's temptation in that crooked way because there's not peace there. Oh Lord, help. Help those that are wayward. He is the giver of true peace. Isaiah 57, 19. Get back a verse before we just started reading. 57, 19. It says, I create fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him who is far off and to him who is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. I love that verse. He's the one that gives Peace to we who are far off or whether we're near. He says peace to us, and he'll heal us and help us. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, cannot rest. No peace for the wicked. Are you dedicated to God? Is your heart for him? John 14, 27. Let's turn over to the New Testament. John 14, 27. Oh, it's a verse that thrills our heart. John 14, 27. We delight this morning in this great verse. So thankful for it. Jesus says, John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid, Jesus says. Do you need peace? Jesus gives it to us. He's the giver of true peace. Peace is uniquely from God. And he is the prince of peace. He is the king of peace. He is the coming Lord of lords and king of kings. He is the prince of peace, Isaiah 9, 6. One of his names. He will rule and reign upon the earth for a thousand years. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. This is our great God and Savior. Do you know the prince of peace? Draw near to him. It's his very name. And he will give us peace. We magnify him this morning and thank him. Praise you, God. We worship you. Peace comes knowing God is in control. Peace comes knowing that God is in control. Right here in John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I'm throwing life preservers from the word of God out to us today. These things will bear us up in the worst storms of life. Tragedy, trials, troubles, we're going to have them in this life. But we have one here that, that says that he will be with us. In me, you may have peace in the world. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace in the world. These things I have spoken to you, these things I have spoken to you. We need to be reading what he said. He spoke these things so that we can have peace. Are your eyes on the Lord. Are you talking to him? Are you walking with him in the spirit? Romans 8, 28, and verse 29. Do you trust that God has things under control? Wait a minute, let me ask you. Is God out of control? Let me ask you. Has God forgotten about you? Does God no longer love you? 
Does God not care for you where you're at? I don't know why the prayers aren't answered sometimes, and I know some of your prayers aren't answered as quickly as what we would like. But is God faithful? Is God true? Romans 8, 28. We, we got, this is part of our, our stability and, the, and wisdom and sanctification and growth in the Word of God. Romans 8, 28 and 29. When we take these verses to heart and, and trust in Him and trust in these truths, it says, and we know that all things... Arr, arr, all things. Arr. Sometimes we don't like to say that. We can take that all out of there. We can change this up a little bit. Wait a minute. God has told us that all things work together. We know that all things work together for good. It might not be good things, but we can trust God as his children, that he loves us that much, that he's going to work for us in his sovereign plan before the foundation of the world, the things that are transpiring, and when we were born, and where we're living, and, and all of these details that we can trust him, as we walk in the Spirit, all things work together for good. To those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. I need that. You need that. To know that all things work together for good. And part of what he is doing, in verse 29, he goes on to say, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed. You see, he foreknew you. If you're born again, he foreknew you, and, and he predestined you to be saved, and he's predestined some other things to happen in your life as well. He's got a plan, and, and he allows the devil to run uh, rampant today, even though I had to check, remember the story of Job, check in with God on certain things, right? And the devil's doing all kinds of things today, and sin in the world is, is having a heyday. But God, we can trust him that as his children, we trust him. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. He predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. How many of you have a chisel at home? Wood chisel, steel chisel, jackhammer chisel, whatever kind of chisel. What size hammer do you got to go with that? <laughs> Bigger hammer, yeah. Do we like it when God pulls out the big chisel and the big hammer? It's hard. It's hard, isn't it? But does the master know what he's doing? Does the master carver, can he be trusted when we hear and we feel that clink of steel on steel, and the stone flies. He is removing stuff from us that is not part of the image of Christ, that is useless material out of our life, so that the image, as it were, we are a block of stone that he is chipping on, and sometimes he reaches over and he gets the big hammer and the big chisel, and he draws back with his God arm and he allows it to fly, and we can say, is it the devil, is it the world, is it, is it God, is it my sin? What in the world's going on? And we are caught in the, in the whirlpool, and we think we're going down, and we reach out to God's life preserver of these promises of who he is and what he has promised us, and we are safe, and he will give us peace in the storm. Do you have it? Maybe he's just taking out the little chisels right now, and he's working on some minute details in your life. We're still being conformed. When we read the word of God, he's working on us. Are you letting him work on you? Because if our, our stone's a little bit hard and he's chipping away as we read the Word of God or if we neglect the Word of God and, and uh, the stone's kind of hard there, he might have to go for the bigger chisel and hammer. He says, we're going to get this work done because he's making us into the image of Christ. Let me take you back to our first verse this morning. You'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in you. Peace comes knowing God is in control. What examples can you think of in your life from the Bible? Don't forget about those things. God teaches us little lessons when we're young, and the, lessons, the troubles get a little bit harder, and they get a little bit harder because God wants us to grow and to depend on him, and they get bigger and bigger. You've got some bigger troubles ahead, folks. Thanks a lot. Hang on. God's got you. It's all right. Know some examples. We could look at the king and Daniel. We don't have time to look at these, but you can look at these on your own. Oh, wow. I wanted to look at these. This, is, this was such a great study. Daniel, the, the king was kind of trusting God in the beginning of this, 16 through 20. 
But Daniel trusts in God and he's in peace. Meanwhile, the king's up half the night and he's all worried, no music, and, he, and he's concerned about this thing. But the king's trust grew as he cried out, Daniel, is your God able to save you? And Daniel says, live forever, O king. Right? My God has closed the lion's mouth. My son is angel and closed the lion's mouth. And the king's faith grows. Daniel's faith grows. And he comes up out of that, that, um, that, that pit, uh, that lion's den. And the other people got in. They didn't even make it to the bottom. They were goners. God closed the lion's mouth. God will be with you among the lions. Some of you are among the lions right now. God's with you. Trust him. Hang on. Daniel prospers, and, and they had that great passage that Chris read for us in the scripture reading about how the king testified to the empire of God Almighty. You see, our trouble is God gets, God's out there, and he's how big? He becomes farther and farther away, and our problem gets bigger and bigger, and, and we lose sight of God. We've got to have our minds stayed on Him and on His greatness and His majesty. And that's why we need the Bible, and that's why we need prayer, and we're walking in the Spirit. And Daniel and the king's faith grows in this time. We have Elijah and Obadiah and the king uh, meet him there, King Ahab and the, the wicked man that he was. And Elijah's not afraid. He meets the people, the, mob, the, the, the mobs, and they, they're saying, that's that Elijah. He prayed and it didn't rain for three and a half years. And it's your fault. And Ahab wasn't afraid. He says, king, it's because of you and your sin that there's no rain. He was bold with the king. And the prophets, the prophets of Baal, 450, slew them all. Mocked them as they were calling down, call down fire from him. Oh, maybe he's asleep. I'm telling you, if you're following anybody but God, your God is asleep. Maybe he can't hear you. Maybe he's, maybe he's gone on a long journey. Pray to him now. I'm telling you, that's what sin offers us. But the true God of heaven and, and uh, the one that's able to make a difference. Elijah prayed. They doused it with water when there was a drought three and a half years. They got the last bit of the water, you might say, is the way I picture it. And they doused it. And he just simply prayed, God. And God, the water, the sacrifice, the wood, the stone, everything's gone. Lapped it all up. Guess who's God. Are you following Jehovah? Stayed upon Jehovah, are you? I'm declaring the Almighty God before you today. You can trust Him and have peace no matter what trouble comes. Well, Jezebel uh, turned on him, and um, he was tired, and uh, he got afraid. Jezebel, I mean, you faced the king. You faced the 450 prophets of Baal, the 400 prophets of Asherah. You faced the people. You faced every, what, what's more is left? Oh, Jezebel. Oh, I'm going to make you like the prophets by tomorrow at this time. I mean, why did he even bat an eyelash at her? God just showed himself all powerful. And why do we get so worked up when trouble comes, folks? But he fled into the wilderness under, I think it was a broom tree. And uh, there he was, it's better for me to die. God came to him, he loved him. It says the angel of the Lord. I, I read that and I'm scratching my head. In the Old Testament, Christophanes, or the, the angel of the Lord, appeared. And uh, maybe this is the Lord himself. Maybe our Jesus, as it were. The Lord, the, the Son of God, in, in uh, Old Testament form, appeared and, and ministered to him. I don't know. Maybe it was just an angel. Just, a, just, a, just an angel. Uh, but God ministered to him. Woke him up, said eat. Provided food for him. Woke him up a second time, says eat some more. You're going to need this. And he went in the strength of that for 40 days in the Mount Horeb. Out of God. Elijah grew in that time. We're all growing. Peter and Jesus on the sea. This is just an amazing story. The Bible's full of great stories. There was uh, no peace that night in the storm. The, the boat's going down, and they're out there in the fourth watch of the night trying to get the ship to shore. And uh, then they saw what they thought. It's a ghost. And they're like, oh, it's Jesus. So the fear and the anxiety, the peace that had left them, now they have peace. It's Jesus. Because they kept it. I on the Lord, and they trusted in him. Jesus, if it be you, right? Bid me to come to you on the water. Over the side of the boat, Peter went. I, amen? You can walk on water with Jesus. Maybe some of you are right now through the trials of life. 
but the wind and the, the wind and, and uh, walking to Jesus there, it was bolsterous, and, and Peter got his eyes off the Lord. When you get your eyes off the Lord, you're going to start going down. But Jesus was there, and he grabbed him. I mean, wouldn't you have loved to have seen that? I mean, the other disciples are holding on in the boat probably. They're, they're looking. Their eyes are this big. And, and Jesus reached out, and I mean, right? I mean, this is just, Jesus will not let you go down. Jesus will be with you. We need these verses, folks, because life's not an easy thing. These are verses that we need. And so they went from not having peace to having peace to not having peace. Jesus grabs him, got him back into the boat, and uh, it was over. Pulled him into the boat, uh, got him back in the boat. The storm was over. God took care of things. Jesus took care of it. He's taking care of you, too. Peace with God motivates us to make peace with others. And uh, we're just going to wrap it up. What's robbing you of peace? Will you identify what is robbing you of peace, and will you get your eyes on the Lord? Is your mind stayed on Jehovah? Is your mind stayed on the Lord? Are you trusting in Him? Take these verses and put them on a billboard. Write them on your bedroom wall. Fill your whole bedroom wall. Make a plaque. And put it on there so that you will not forget these things. Print them out and tape them around places in your home. Make a sign that says trust. Put it up big and bold. Trust. Are you trusting in the Lord? Is your faith in Him? I trust that you are. Will you lay your burden down at the feet of Jesus today? Will you take hold of peace that God offers you? Will, you? will you get off the, the crooked ways and be on the narrow way by faith and by trust, by looking to the Lord and being conformed to the image of His Son by praying? There's some th- responsibility that we have in this process as we walk in the Spirit. Lord, we want to thank You for Your Word today. It's amazing. Un- indescribable power and greatness and things that you have done. And the Bible's full of these great testimonies of your faithfulness to your people and your dealing with men and women. We rejoice in you today. I pray that you will help each one here, especially uh, up and down these seats here, men, women, young people that have particular challenges that they're facing. I pray that your spirit will comfort them and that these verses will be the toolbox tools to enable them to have peace in the burden that they're facing, in the trial that they're facing, the struggles of life. In Jesus' name.